Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of evening prayer from St. Michael and Holy Angels Facebook page. Today is Sunday, the 15th of May, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our worship begins on page 61. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So welcome to those who have just joined us. Let us say the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. As we are still in the season of Easter, let us say the canticle, Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so let us take a moment to allow God to recall to us those things which we have done that were not pleasing to Him and those things which we did not do that we ought to have done. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and save you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to those now joining. Let us have our office hymn, hymn number 480. Thy way, not mine, O Lord. CPWI 480. Thy way, not mine, O Lord. However dark it be, lead me by thine own hand. Choose out the path for me. Smooth let it be, O rough. It will be still the best, winding or straight it leads, right onward to thy rest. I 
dare not choose my lot I would not if I might Choose thou for me, my God So shall I walk aright The kingdom that I seek Is thine, so let the way That leads to it be thine Else I must surely stray Take thou my cup and it with joy or sorrow fell, as best to thee may seem. Choose thou my good and ill. Choose thou for me, my friends, my sickness or my health. Choose thou my cares for me my poverty or wealth not mine not mine the choice in things or great or small be thou my guide my strength my wisdom and my all amen that will not be a very popular hymn with a lot of people Choose down my wealth and my poverty will not go down well with some people. And so we turn to our psalm, our psalms for this evening's office, Psalms 8 and 84. Psalms 8 and 84. Psalm number 8 begins on page 477. And Psalm 84 begins on page 578 we begin with psalm number eight o lord our governor how exalted is your name in all the world out of the mouths of infants and children your majesty is praised above the heavens you have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the weights of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the, in the parts of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Psalm 84, page 578. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found, her, uh, have found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. 
Hawking will guard Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us have our first reading. From the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22, to chapter 8, verse 1. Wisdom, chapter 7, verse 22, to chapter 8, verse 1. Wisdom, the fashioner of all things, taught me. There is in her spirit that is intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, mobile, clear, unpolluted, distinct, invulnerable, loving the good, keen, irresistible, beneficent, humane, steadfast, sure, free from anxiety, all-powerful, all overseeing all, and penetrating through all spirits, that are intelligent, pure, and altogether subtle. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. For she is a reflection of eternal light a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. Although she is but one, she can do all things, and while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. She is more beautiful than the sun and excels every constellation of the stars. Compared with the light, she is found to be superior, for it is succeeded by the night. But against wisdom, evil does not prevail. She reaches mightily from one end of the earth to the other, and she orders all things well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we turn to page 67 as we say the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Saviour. For you have looked with favour on your lonely servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, 
and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second lesson comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of Spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us see the canticle on page 52, Jesus Saviour. Jesus Saviour. Jesus Saviour of the world Come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. 
we look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. When you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share in the life of your kingdom. So my brothers and sisters, there is not more, much more that can be said that has been said by the passage in the letter to the Hebrews. It begins by talking about the great cloud of witnesses and that cloud of witnesses were those saints who have gone before, who endured the tests, who endured the hardships and the persecution that, um, that happened to them in their lifetime, and, but they did not relinquish their faith in God. In fact, some of them went to the persecution willingly and joyfully so that they can, so that they could prove, so that they could show how much they loved God and how much they trusted that He would deliver them, maybe not from the physical death, but that they trusted Him that He would raise them up on the last day. They were not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. They were not ashamed of testifying for Jesus. And they are being now used as examples that we should now follow. And even if we don't want to look at them, the scripture says, we can look to Jesus who also endured persecution and shame and joyfully went to the cross to save us. And now he sits at the right hand of God. And so we are encouraged to look at our trials and our persecutions not as something that is not as something that we that we need to feel sorry for ourselves about, but we need to look at it as our as, as discipline, being disciplined by God, not that we have done anything wrong per se, but those who live, those who stand for Christ will endure persecution and God regards us, if, if God regards us as his children, then we will be tested. We will have to endure persecution because that is what happens to those who stand for God. That is what happens to those who believe in Christ and who testify to his, his love and his grace and who want to share the gospel with the world. We will, even if it's not physical, we will, some, there will be people who will want to ridicule us, who will find that we are wasting our time and and who will be looking at us as maybe not sincere and and not living our our fullest life or our best life. But we know that in the end God will redeem us because He has redeemed us through Jesus Christ and that we will not be put to shame. The Psalmists say this all the time, O oh Lord, that we not be put to shame and let me not all altogether disgrace because for having trusted in you. And even if even if we have done something that is against God's will and we we have to endure discipline, then that is a good thing because it means that we God, somebody cares about us and somebody wants to see us go in the right way. There are so many things that this scripture says that that is that is supposed to be happening 
um, but they're not happening today. Uh, it talks about parents who love their children will discipline them. And if, it, if you are not being disciplined, that means it means you're not really, you're not legally the, the child of the parent. And unfortunately, we see a lot of a lack of discipline happening today even by parents who, even by, even for children who are supposed to be legal or legitimate and in, for all, all children in all circumstances, uh, there's a lot of lack, there's a lot of lack of discipline and it's, it seems that parents, some parents are not, um, prepared to take on the responsibility of this discipline in their children and so a lot of children are going astray and they're not being they're not being taken care of they're not being raised to be good citizens to be you know god fearing citizens and we are it's scripture saying well what kind of parent leaves a child to, to go astray. What kind of parent allows his or her child not to, to know what is right or doesn't teach his child what is right and, and what is wrong. And so the scripture is saying that if we are suffering or if we are being disciplined, we, do, we don't like to use the word punish too much, but if we are being disciplined, it means that someone cares about us and someone cares that we are doing the right thing and someone cares enough to set us on the right path and we all know that we do not enjoy being disciplined it is not pleasant even when it's not even when it's not physical it is not pleasant i mean nobody likes to be both nobody likes to be talked to spoken to sternly or, or in anger but even if our parents did, are doing the best that they can and doing the best that they know how to do, you have to try to understand that they are doing it because they want to see us, um, they wanted to see us go on the right path. And this is how it is with God. It, it says that those whom he loves to discipline. This is not to say that God does not love everyone, but those who want to obey him, those who acknowledge him, and those who, you know, follow him will and will will feel his discipline more than those who ignore him. Because if you're not if you you know you don't want to listen to authority or your parents, then what they tell you will not mean anything. What they are, what you are going through will not mean anything, or the the licks will not do anything for you. All right, but if you respect your parents or you respect those in authority, then you will feel a way how when you are disciplined because even if you feel that you have disappointed them or that you, you let them down there is something that you will feel that will make you understand well this person or these people care about me and they, it's, it's not because they dislike me or they want to abuse me All right. so we have to accept our hardships we have to accept our trials and tribulations as part of our journey with Christ, as part of our journey in the faith, so that in the end we will be able to stand strong and stand in firm and not give up. Discipline, all these things also helps us to to be stronger it also helps us to increase our faith just as when our parents disciplined us we became better people and eventually when we became adults and we look back and we realize that 
it was a good thing that they did and it was a good thing that they they denied us certain things it was a good thing that they prevented us from going certain places and doing certain things it was a good thing that they said no when we asked for certain things and we appreciate now in hindsight because now we are able to see that possibly it would not have been good for us that there was danger thing that we could not have seen at the time and this is how it is with God as well God knows God knows everything and he has the big picture and so he will not allow he does not want anything any harm to come to us and so he will also will tell us no or tell us wait or tell us not now and so these things they are not to be taken as well God is not working for me or God is not you know so all these things help us to increase our faith and to grow stronger and so in eventually we will see we will understand just as we did as just as most of us who are adults now understand why our parents did what they did we will understand why God is teaching us these things why God is leading us to these places why God is you know allowing these things to happen to us or allowing these things allowing us to undergo these these circumstances the Lord be with you so we turn to page 69 as we say the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom, endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. So the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter is found on page 170, page 170. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to lose everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God of peace, 
who have taught us that in retaining and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Grant to your servants, O God, to be set on fire with your love, to be strengthened by your, with, by your power, to be illuminated by your Spirit, to be filled with your grace, and to move on with your help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> so, Lord, we continue to pray for our country. We pray for peace. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance from this fate of violence and violent deaths and killings that have we set our land or country in the last few days. We pray for the Lord for those who have lost loved ones, for it under violent circumstances. We pray for your spirit of consolation and comfort. We pray for the souls of those who have died violently this week to domestic violence, murder, and other circumstances. Lord, in your mission, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the hearts of those who seek to perpetrate violence against others. We pray that they will find you, find your your that they will encounter your grace and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the courage and the fortitude by those in authority and those in legal spares that they will do what is necessary. First of all, to root out corruption and to implement measures that will help those who are prone to crime and violence, prone to falling through the cracks in our system. Lord, we pray for systems and measures that will bring relief to those who are undergoing all kinds of difficulties and stress and those who are on the verge of who are who are at their breaking point. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. We pray for those who live in abusive situations. We continue to pray for their protection. We pray for change of heart of their abusers. We pray that you will defend them and protect them, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for their healing. We continue to pray for an end to the pandemic worldwide. We pray that here in Trinidad and Tobago we will be able to 
stem the spread of cases that you are able to control and manage the situation so that you do not need any further lockdowns and quarantines continue to pray for the discipline of our citizens that we will be obedient to the protocol that we will not let down our guards that we will continue to do what is necessary Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we continue to pray for healing for those who are infected with the virus Lord we lift them up to you and we pray for their healing and wholeness we pray especially for those in high dependency units and intensive care units Lord we ask that they will make this time to get closer to you that they will use this time to get closer to you Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for those who are sick from other kinds of ailments we also pray for their healing we pray for those who are about to undergo surgical or medical procedures we pray that you will bring them safely we lift up those who may have gotten some unfortunate news about their health we pray that they will trust you we pray that they will put their faith in you we pray that you will heal them in mind body and spirit lord in your mercy hear our prayer we continue to pray for our schools and for our children students teachers <coughs> and all other stakeholders in our education system that they will continue to be able to study and go to their classes and extracurricular activities in safe and secure environments we continue to pray for discipline in our schools for an end to violence we continue to pray for the protection of those children who are most vulnerable we pray for protection against those who that want to influence them in unsavory and immoral practices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those celebrating birthdays today or this week or any other special anniversaries. And we want to remember Kareen, who will celebrate her birthday this week. We pray for health, strength, and prosperity. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, you grant effectively to your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so, before we end our act of worship, let us sing hymn number 455 My Faith Looks Up to Thee. CPWI 455. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be grace impart the strength to my fainting heart my zeal inspired as thou hast died for me oh may my love to thee your warm and changeless be holy While life's dark ways I try 
spread it, and the griefs around it will spread it. Leave thou my guide. Bear the darkness turn it to day. Wipe sorrow's tears away. And oh, let me ever stray from thee aside. When ends life's trance and dream, when death's cold sullen stream, shallow me go. Blessed Saviour, then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above a the soul. So we want to wish birthday greetings to Roxanne and Diana. Also to Anne-Marie and John. So Lord, we just want to lift up Roxanne, Ayana, Anne-Marie and John to you for your blessing as they celebrate another year of life. Lord, grant them your peace, your good health, strength, and prosperity, and your protection. Lord, we thank you that you have allowed them to see another year, and we continue to ask that they continue to love you and to save you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us in St. Michael and Holy Angels for the series of evening prayer. As usual, continue to be safe. Wash, watch, wear, watch and pray. Pray for those who are ill. Continue to take care of yourselves and please be disciplined, vigilant. We are not out of the pandemic, we are not out of the woods, so we still need to obey the protocols. Alright? So be safe, have a peaceful night, and we will see each other again, God willing, um, on Wednesday, please call. Thank you, have a good night.